guitar players. Remember how those damn keyboarders kept teasing you with virtual guitarists? No more. It's time to fight back. It's time for revenge. Introducing you, Jam Virtual. Hey everyone, and welcome to a quick look at UGEM's latest release. Virtual Pianist Vogue. I suppose it should be fairly obvious what this thing is going to do, so let me quickly explain the basics so that we can move on to sound examples. In its simplest application, this is a plugin with nice piano sounds. They range from dark to bright, from vintage lo-fi to expensive glamour, from hyper-realism with key-up sustains, resonance modeling and other sampling rocket science, to complete plastic in the style of 90s house pianos. Oh, and from clean to modulated to the point where you wouldn't know that this was based on a piano. But if that was all there is to it, it would just be five virtual pianos in the tradition of many other existing piano plugins. But this is a virtual pianist. Non-piano players, especially guitar players, have requested this for some time now. An equivalent to the well-known virtual guitarists, but this time for piano. So this plugin not only gives you pianos, but also pianists. Obviously, those come in the form of the traditional U-Jam styles and variations. Let's take a look. Say you don't play piano and have a nice ballad. You'd like that ballad to have one of those classic John Lennon type bling woo bling woo pianos. But it would take you ages to program a piano part. So let's do this most basic of piano parts with the universal style. It's a real piano performance with human timing that adapts to your input. No skills needed other than pressing single keys. You could essentially throw bricks at your keyboard, but since that's the most basic example, obviously it doesn't stop there. Harmless as the style section may look, I would like to argue that it has one of the most sophisticated frameworks of musical intelligence under the hood. See, as a piano player myself, I believe that playing pop piano poses some rather specific questions. For example, if you've ever played in a band, you've probably noticed that the bassist doesn't like your left hand to fill up his bass range. So the style variations follow the usual amount of Aliens u jam logic, plus the further left you go, the less of a left hand there is. Of course there is keys for individual accents, then fill-ins. Pianists love to play fill-ins. In general, piano is often played in a somewhat fluid, ever-changing way. Thus, you can modulate the dynamics in real time with the pitch wheel. But much fancier even, you can add or reduce complexity with the modulation wheel. This can be used to fill gaps between vocal lines. And in combination with the pitch wheel, it feels as if you're conducting the piano part in real time. Not only super useful, but also quite a lot of fun. You can have the pianist play in lower or higher, narrower or wider key ranges by either just playing lower and higher or by dragging these little arrows. Piano parts also sometimes have a rather high harmonic complexity, music theory business that you might not want to have anything to do with. Therefore, if you tell the plugin just the basic key of your song, and please do tell the plugin the basic key of your song if possible, this will all fall nicely into place all the way up to pretty complex stuff like this. Even with complex patterns and input, those little gremlins under the hood always make smart and musical decisions. But I would like this to sound like an old sample for my next hip-hop track. That takes just one knob turn. Which brings me to the next chapter. These two knobs are super powerful and allow anything from basic effects all the way to complete transformations of your piano on the sample level. Let's loop this style for some examples. It can do simple tasks like a bit of compression, modern or vintage, obvious effects like chorus and such, but it could also sabotage your piano to have older mechanics. Or you could dampen the strings. I love this could turn the piano into an electric piano. Or a classic 70s stage piano. You know, those short things with built-in pickups that bands like Supertramp or Queen used. Or turn it into a cembalo. Why? Well, why not? Or into a synth. Or remix the piano into granular clouds. Or into a Hans Zimmer-ish organ kind of thing. Where you can only hear the resonances of the piano strings. 
or play everything in reverse. Okay, enough of that. How about the ambience knob? Well, it's kind of the same thing here. You have a collection of piano-optimized, super nice reverbs. You have delays that range from hi-fi multi-tap delays, all the way to gritty old tape delay emulations. But again, you also have creative combos like this psychedelic Bowie-ish modulator zoom. Or turn your piano into clouds of sound all the way to hysteric chopped up sequences. And you can always course correct all of this with the focus EQ. Let me show how these elements add up to a real life workflow that's super easy and fast yet ridiculously versatile. Say I'm scoring for some Netflix thing and have this moody bed of static strings. I want one of those emotional pianos to play the occasional sad note. So let's see how long it takes us to get there. Let's choose the emotion character and the soft pianist style. That's already pretty nice. But I also want to really grab the viewer, make it sound as if your head was inside the piano. So a touch of close-up mechanics, please. Now, the director told me that these piano notes should please communicate the existentialist conflicts of matter, time and space, as symbolized by the lead actress's ambition to exist as more than just a temporary manifestation of an absolute or infinite substance. Or something like that. To me, that sounds like maybe we should put some infinite reverb on those notes. But now the director changed his opinion and instead just wants his lead actress to go party. Well, okay, how about the plastic character, a party style? But now he changed his mind again and wants to go back to that temporary manifestation of infinite whatever thing that he mentioned earlier. Just different. Maybe he just needs a dark synth pad. Here's an old keyboarder secret. Everybody can always agree with a dark synth pad. Especially when it's one that is as deep as this one. So, to summarize what this virtual pianist does. Pianos that can sound super realistic or super unrealistic depending on your needs. A pianist section that smartly adapts to your input, giving you parts that you can conduct in real time. Plus a section of piano-optimized processing and sample manipulation, where you can get to the most outlandish sounds by just using a handful of knobs. There is a hilariously big archive of presets to showcase these possibilities, but as always, you're invited to just try it out yourself with the usual UGEM demo that runs without any restrictions for one month. And that's Virtual Pianist Vogue.